First of all, let me say this. The advent of this person in your life was not a mistake. Whether they are actually physically close to you or not, the fact that you are part, you are within each other's mind space, you're within each other's energetic fields or whatnot, whatever, is a very, very good thing because it's helping to heal you on so many different levels that you may not necessarily be aware of. I'm, and I'm saying that because of the world and the Ten of Swords and the Sun energy here. This is a lot of completion. This is a lot of ending. This is a lot of illumination. This is a lot of light at the end of the tunnel type of energy here. Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. So this is going to be your general energy reading, yes, for your day. Please keep, in mind, please keep in mind that this is a general reading. So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Also, um, this could, the roles could re be reversed here, yes. Yeah, so, you know, take that as it resonates. But then also, this is a timeless reading. Yes, this, these readings are not dated anymore. At least the morning coffee readings aren't dated anymore. So whenever this, whenever you're guided to watch this reading and it resonates for you, then that's the message for you in that moment, yeah? Um, okay, so it may seem or it may sound a little more reverby or echoey in here than um, normal. And that's because I do not have my door open. Um, I have a another door. I have like two ways that I can enter my apartment. And um, I had the door open earlier, but like it's windy. Like there's a, it's, it's not like super windy. It's a nice breeze, but it's strong enough where it kicks open my screen. You know, the bug net that I have on both of my doors. Um, and I'm just tired of letting all the mosquitoes in. I'm not even going to lie to you guys. Like, I was, I, I woke up this morning, I was sitting on my bed, I was like, alright, I'm going to meditate, you know, for a, a good minute, and, and I'm in the middle of meditating, and all of a sudden I hear this fucking mosquito flying around my head. It's like, yo, will you get the fuck out of here, please? Like, nobody asked for your, nobody asked for your opinion, number one. Number two, ain't nobody invited you in here, so what the fuck are you doing? You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> so I'm just tired of like it, it the wind is strong enough and the magnets on my screen are <laughs> excuse me are weak enough where like it just it literally blows them open and they just stay open and it's like it defeats the purpose of having them you know what i mean so i don't want my door open right now and quite frankly i be, i'm like i keep my doors open a lot and it's mainly for the cats so they can go in and out because they're jungle cats right gotta honor the jungle cat but like i would like to keep my doors closed for a little bit <laughs> orion is over on the bed relaxing jinx is out there doing her thing like so she may come back soon and want to come back inside but so that's why it sounds a little more echoey or reverby than normal so anyway uh, happy Thursday. I hope you guys are doing well. Um, happy hour was super fun last night. Um, I did do a collective love reading over on, uh, Instagram as an Instagram live session as our happy hour pregame show that is available on Instagram. But then I also downloaded it and edited it and put it up on YouTube. So if you don't have Instagram or you don't, you just want to watch it here on YouTube, you can, you can find that in my feed. Um, Oh shoot, there was something else I wanted to say. But happy hour was fun last night. Thank you to everybody that tuned in. We had a great time. Oh, that's right. And then happy hour here on YouTube started out with a bit of a collective reading, which does feel or did feel like an extension of what we talked about over on the Instagram live session. Yeah, so if you want to check both of those out, I highly recommend that you do so. So for today's reading, we are going to use the True Heart Intuitive Tarot. I love this deck. My mom actually bought this deck for me. And I and she didn't realize what she had done when she bought it. But this deck was developed by Rachel True. Do you guys remember who Rachel True is? She's an actress that was in one of my favorite movies of all time. And I'm not sure my mom knew this. She didn't know this, actually. We talked about it. I was like, Mom, do you know who made this deck? And she was like, no. 
but I bought it because you said you were going to do love readings, more love readings. And I saw that and I was like, ooh, that looks like it's perfect. I was like, number one, mom, you're freaking awesome. Cause yes to that. But number two, look at this. This is Rachel True. And she was in The Craft. I love that movie. Okay. She, I mean, she was in other movies here, obviously, but like The Craft was like, is like one of my movies, y'all. There's a fly in here too. Get, get, get out of here. Freaking bugs. Anyway. So, but I, I worked with this deck. I think I used this deck for one of the monthlies recently or something. I don't remember, but this is a be I love this deck. So we're going to use that today. Um, and we're going to get clarity from the Los Carabello deck as usual. Yes. And we will cross the Oracle guidance bridge when we get there. Yeah. All right, cool. Alrighty, y'all, let's get into this here and see what we've got for the day. Here we go. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate representation in terms of the situations, situation shifts, circumstances, and places in which we all need it the most. Thank you so very much, Spirit. All right, y'all. Let's get into this here and see what we've got for your day. Five shuffles. One. Two. Three. Alrighty, y'all. So what's going on? What do we want to talk about today? What's on the agenda for today? Okay. At the bottom of the deck, you do have the Knight of Cups. And to me, this is talking about somebody wanting to move forward, somebody moving forward with their heart. I'm literally, I, I mean, obviously there is a man on this card, but I'm literally seeing, I'm, okay, wait, okay, wait, hold on a second. So this could have to do with love and romance. Um, I'm literally seeing an individual wanting to express their emotions, wanting to express their love to someone with this Knight of Cups here. All right. And it does feel like, oh, wow. Okay. It does feel like it's a masculine energy. So this could be a man or a woman or uh, if this could be a man or a woman. It's just, if it's a woman, it's someone that's more in their masculine side who identifies more with masculine energy, but obviously it doesn't matter. This is not, we are gender neutral here, right? On this channel. Okay, excellent. But it definitely does feel like somebody is, I, I okay. Uh, it feels like somebody is getting up the balls, the gumption, the wherewithal to approach someone. Underneath the Knight of Cups is the 10 of Cups, you guys. Um, It's interesting because underneath the Ten of Cups is also is then the Nine of Swords, but then you have the Six of Wands and the Six of Cups here. 
And to me, this Nine of Swords feels like um, all of the worry involved. It's like all of the all of the different fears and all the different things that could go wrong. And yet, there is definitely a soulmate bond here. Like when I, when I saw the Six of Cups, it just felt like whether you knew each other in childhood or not, it just feels like you two could be absolutely the best of friends. It's like you, it's like you connect with each other, you vibe with each other on an inner child level, on a, on like a sense of, like on, on a, a level of innocence that is very hard to find. It's very hard to come by. Um, and that I feel like makes the, the bond between the two of you so incredibly strong, stronger than maybe anything else you may have experienced in your life. But then there's the adult fears that come into play, Nine of Swords. Even though somebody, okay, even though somebody wants to share their love, express their love, there's still fear underneath it. And a lot of, the, and, and it's actually, it's really, I like the fact that I explained it in this way. It's the adult fears. It's the fears of the adult mind. It's the fears of the conditioned mind. It's the fears of the indoctrinated mind. It's the fears of a jaded mind. It's the fears of a mind that have been through some shit and don't really want, doesn't really want to get hurt again. But then there's this beautiful opportunity in front of you that's damn near irresistible. Eleven, eleven on the counter. Um, the energy that I'm seeing here is slightly confusing because you do have the Three of Cups, you also have the Ace of Cups. Okay, but then you also have the Fool with Temperance. So it's like somebody wants to take a leap of faith. You guys get along very well. There's a very celebratory energy here. This may be a situation in which you have a common social circle, or maybe you met at a party, or you're about to meet at a party, or they're, you know, you're going to meet someone, and it, it'll be uh, facilitated by a friends group or something like that. I don't know. What I'm hearing here is that you guys just get along really, really well together. Like, it's always a party with the two of you. Somehow, some way, you find a way to enjoy yourselves. On a really, on a very innocent level. I mean, yeah, there are romantic feelings here, don't get me wrong, but it's not always all about that. Like, there is really a very, very strong bond here between you two. And it definitely, definitely does feel like someone wants to take a leap of faith here. But that this is where the confusing element comes into play. Because then Temperance is here is saying, hold on, wait a second. Divine timing is at work here. You, just have, you have to just go with the flow. And that actually might be the difficult part for you, for both of you. That could also be what's contributing to this fear, Nine of Swords. But remember that the Nine of Swords energy is a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's also illusionary. It's all in your mind. And it doesn't necessarily have to take root in reality. The trick to that, though, is to not focus on it and to not give it so much energy that it actually comes to life, right? You don't want to do that. Just, I, I heard just leave it where it is. Observe it. See it for what it is. Be like, okay, you're an irrational fear. I'm going to leave you right there. And I'm going to focus somewhere else, right? Right, okay. But I'm getting there is definitely love here. There is definitely a desire to... Okay, what I heard was there's definitely love to... There's definitely desire to share that love with someone else. Um, meaning that somebody has a whole, they've got a whole bunch of love within them and they want to share it with someone and they've probably found somebody that they really, really, really want to share it with, but I just heard divine timing is at play. Okay. Um, 
I forgot the other part of what I was going to say there, but that's fine. Let's get, <laughs> let's get some more on this situation. What's going on in this situation between these two, between these two hearts? Okay. Oh. Well, to be quite honest with you guys, this is a very good match. Even though it's not like official counterparts, I am hearing this is divine counterparts here. But you have the King of Pentacles and the Queen of Cups. This is a beautiful match. Earth and water go together like fire and air. Some of you may be fully aware, I'm hearing, of who your King of Pentacles is. Some of you may be fully aware of who your Queen of Cups is. At the bottom of the deck, you have the world. Shit, you guys. To the Ace of Swords. To the Lovers. To the, Sen of, to the Ten of Swords. To the Sun. And oddly enough, well, first of all, first of all, let me say this, that the advent of this person in your life was not a mistake, okay? This person, whether they are actually physically close to you or not, the fact that you are part, you are within each other's mind space, you're within each other's energetic fields or whatnot, whatever, is a very, very good thing. Because it's helping to heal you on so many different levels that you may not necessarily be aware of. I'm, and I'm saying that because of the world and the Ten of Swords and the Sun energy here. This is a lot of completion. This is a lot of ending. This is a lot of illumination. This is a lot of light at the end of the tunnel type of energy here. The Ace of Swords is telling me that you both know full well who you are to each other. Ace of Swords and the Lovers. And quite frankly, this King of Pentacles and Queen of Cups energy may actually be the balance and harmony and union of masculine and feminine energy within the two of you. Like the, each of you could be ex, uh, um, embodying this Queen of Cups, King of Pentacles energy in your own respective ways, which only helps to gravitate you towards each other even more. I, okay, I just heard, let's get another poll on this one, and then we're going to clarify. How do I put this back? <laughs> Wait, hold on. Okay. Yes, okay. I think. Yes, all right. <laughs> one last shuffle here. On this situation. One last, not one last shuffle, but one last pull. So one last pull in this situation, please, Spirit. Before we move. Oh my God, that's a lot. Okay. You know what? Bear with me, guys. Nope. I don't, I... <laughs> hold on a second. You have the moon, the high priestess, the page of swords, the hanged man, the queen of swords, the king of wands, and the three of swords, with the seven of swords at the bottom of the deck. Very, very interesting because you have two depictions of masculine and feminine energy. And you remember when I said earth goes with water, just like fire goes with air? Okay. Well, that's kind of cool, right? 
because the King of Wands is fire, the Queen of Swords is air, and you still have a balance of masculine and feminine energy. Now, here's the thing, because now it kind of feels like this might be the other person. So one person is here in the Queen of Cups, King of Pentacles energy, and the other person is in the Queen of Swords, King of, King of Wands energy. All right. So, the other person here is going through an enlightenment phase, okay? Is coming to terms with a lot of things that they had not noticed about themselves in the past, is what I just heard here. Um, the moon with the high priestess. There's a lot of processing happening. There's a lot of learning. Queen, uh, I'm sorry, page of swords. Three of Swords to the Hanged Man. Okay. Now, the one thing that's really tripping me up here is the Seven of Swords. But I actually don't think that this is as bad as it might seem. Because I feel like the Seven of Swords is pointing to... Or is... Is um, referring to what is not seen under the surface because underneath the seven of swords is the knight of pentacles okay the knight of pentacles to the queen i'm sorry to the empress to the seven of wands um so okay so this person may be in an energy of pretty strong defenses or holding up pretty strong boundaries maybe not letting you in as much as you may want them to but that's because it feels like they're going through a process of like kind of trying to repair it themselves right now it feels like they're in a little bit of a cocoon type of energy seven of wands and the empress it may feel like they're hiding things from you. It may feel like that they're very, they are hiding from you. That's not really the case. I mean, in some situations, I am feeling like, you know, they might actually be <laughs> hiding from you a little bit because I'm hearing because of the damage that's been done to them. They don't want to project that onto you. You need to give them their space that they need right now because this, this is what they're doing right now. Seven of Wands. And the Empress. The Empress is that nurturing, loving, caring, compassionate energy that's kind of nursing them back to good health while they focus on understanding the deeper aspects of the pain and trauma that they've gone through in life. Three of Swords, the Hanged Man, the High Priestess, and the Moon. So they may seem pretty self-centered right now king of wands but ultimately they're dealing they're they're dealing with the pain they're dealing with the hurt king of wands queen of swords and then here's the other part the other person in this situation the, the counterpart really that's in the king of pentacles and the queen of cups very nurturing caring grounded air energy and so it feels like you might want to express your love to them more than usual um in most cases or in some cases they do need to hear this even though they may not necessarily be um, reciprocating right away or, you know, I, I just heard give them the benefit of the doubt because they're doing a lot of work on their own, on their own to heal, to go through a healing process. All right. Cool. Okay. So let's go through a little bit of a review process before we move on to some clarification because now I definitely am seeing this as two sides of an equation here. We do have one individual whom we were talking whom we were speaking of first in this King of Pentacles, Queen of Cups energy. This person absolutely feels like they've met the right match. Ace of Cups, Three of Cups. Okay. And with this Ace of Cups, also with this Fool energy, it feels like this person is ready to take a leap of faith <laughs> to ask them to marry them, I guess is what I literally just heard that. So, okay, that's fine. But you're needing to be patient. 
and allow the universe to work things out on its own, allow the universe to work things out as it's going to. I did just hear marriage is possible here, okay? But you have to allow circumstances to work themselves out as they will naturally and organically. I just got a notification for some like stupid fucking game on like fucking the app store. What the fuck do I need that for? Sorry. <laughs> the other person is trying their hardest to get to you. That's what I just heard. They don't feel like they're ready. That may be the case. It still feels like they're still processing a lot of the pain and the trauma from the past. And their focus is very much on their own selves right now, where it needs to be, okay? I don't want y'all to look at this King of Wands energy and think, oh, this is a narcissist, this person is an asshole, this person is all self-centered and blah, 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 whoop de whoop and all that boo shit. No, that's not what we're talking about here. This person is processing a lot of pain and trauma. I just heard from his past, from his family, take it as it resonates. Doesn't have to necessarily be a him, could be a her, but whatever. I really do like the fact that you two are seem to be mirroring each other in some way. You both have a balance of masculine and feminine energy within. And you have this balance in ways that complements yourself, which I find really, really cool. And then together, you guys bring all four of the elements together, which I find really super cool, okay? Okay. Let us start with some clarification. Yeah, let's get the clarification going here. Five shuffles. One. And what I want to do with this clarification is I want to, um, I just want to get advice for the individuals in this situation. This is two. Um, for their own selves and their own lives and where they find themselves respectfully in terms of, uh, excuse me, excuse me, respectively and respectfully in terms of the situation of you two coming together. This is two. How does each individual within this situation handle this. This is three. Four. And five. Alrighty. So starting with the first individual, who is in this Queen of Cups, King of Pentacles energy. Yeah? My nose is starting to itch now, you guys. Okay. So, advice for this individual. Yeah, what do they do in terms of this situation? Other than being patient, yeah, all right, we got that. But, like, <laughs> what else? Okay, well, uh, first thing I want to say is your intuition is correct here, which makes sense because you're in this Queen of Cups energy, or this individual is in the Queen of Cups energy, and this is an intuitive energy, psychic even. The only other individual that is that rivals the Queen of Cups in, in the realm of psychic uh, awareness or ESP, extrasensory perception, is the High Priestess, and the High Priestess is on the other side of the equation with, the, with your counterpart here, okay? Which is beautiful, but... The high priestess is representing for this, in, for the other side of the equation, the high priestess, priestess is representing understanding higher realms or understanding deeper elements of their situation. This high priestess energy for this person feels like an assistive energy, somebody, something that is assisting them with dealing with their past trauma and their heartbreak, okay? That doesn't mean there isn't psychic awareness available in this individual, it's just, all right, you get it. But what I heard was, your intuition is correct. At the bottom of the deck, you do have the Ten of Cups. 
okay? You have found a life, a potential life, life, life lifelong partner. You have found a potential, uh, 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 like a, a mate, a potential mate. But, well, shit. Well, shit. I mean, I was going to say, but, but now I take that back. Because what you need to do is just continue on this path. Three of Wands and the Fool. There's the Fool energy again. So yes, you're ready to take a leap of faith. And that leap of faith, the, the, the time, the moment for that leap of faith will happen. You just have to continue walking the path that you've already been walking that led you to this person to begin with. And it's so funny because I was just thinking about this this morning, but there is a saying that says, and, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing, I'm not saying it as, it, like, I guess as it's really said or whatever, but it's that there, there is no coincidence in two souls meeting each other. And then there's confirmation here that your intuition is on point. Because there's one last card here that's fallen out and it fell face down and it is none other than the High Priestess. And the High Priestess fell over here on the pile of the other person. So I kind of want to say that their intuition is on point as well. They know they found you for a reason. Together you two have the Ten of Cups. Okay, so let's look at this other person then. In the Queen of Swords, King of Wands energy, yeah? What's going on? What do we need to know? What, does, what advice do you have for this person moving forward in terms of this relationship? It's not right there. Okay. Seven of Pentacles is at the bottom of the deck. There are, some, those, there are still some things that you... If you are this individual that's in the Queen of Swords, King of Wands energy that's going through this process of dealing with past hurt and past heartbreak, there are still some things that you need to accept. Um, and I feel like there are still some things that you are still kind of cycling through, potentially, or maybe you're just having a hard time letting go of. And that's all coming from the Seven of Pentacles energy. There's something about what you're cycling through right now, this individual, as, as in the King of Wands, Queen of Swords energy. There's something about what you're cycling through right now that um, that has that has you trapped. I kind of want to say almost has you by the balls. You have the Seven of Pentacles. Underneath the Seven of Pentacles is the Nine of Pentacles and the Seven of Wands uh, and Strength. What's holding you back right now is, uh, this feels like family in some cases, but it feels like there's just a sense of allowing yourself to be manipulated or allowing your emotions to be manipulated by situations from the past. This is really hard for me to put into words. I don't know if I'm wording this correctly because I'm feeling like it's just, it, it and it, it, and maybe and maybe it's gotten to this point because you've been dealing with this for so long but quite frankly what i want to say is stop allowing this to still hurt you like i get it you're going through a grieving process i understand that but at some point at some point you have to take control here and um not allow this to affect you any longer I, I, and I say that with all the compassion in the world. I don't know what it is you're going through. I just feel like what, because what I feel like here is you have to stand on your own and just put up those boundaries and not let this affect you anymore. Not let this have any sort of emotional influence over you any longer. And that's a hard thing to get to. I get that. 
but I also, what I'm also feeling like is this is what, this is really blocking you from allowing you to move forward with what your heart desires, Knight of Cups. Now that was all at the bottom of the deck. What we have that's fallen out for you here is the Sun, the Page of Cups, the Nine of Swords, and the Star. I'm sorry, not the Nine of Swords, the Nine of Wands and the Star. But quite frankly, this Nine of Wands might actually be very similar to the Nine of Swords for you. Because there is some sort of extreme defensive energy that you're putting up or that you're dealing with or that you're expressing, I guess I want to say, that actually feels very similar or feels like it's related to the Nine of Swords energy. I, I, feel, I almost feel like you're fearing the worst which I guess would make sense given what it is you're processing or dealing with or healing with here. But the advice for you, this person, Queen of Swords, King of Wands energy, is that it is actually okay for you to love. It's okay for you to open up your heart. It's okay for you to allow yourself to be playful, to be joyous, to be, to allow your inner child to move forward. You don't have to Okay, so now I'm hearing extreme parenting. This is almost like helicopter parent. You know what I mean? But in terms of like your inner child. Because it feels like your inner child wants to express their love to this other person, wants to get in on that, and wants to... <laughs> wants to get in on that. Wants to... Wants to play with their friend again is what I, literally what I just heard. <laughs> You guys have a deep soulmate bond that is like that goes that that goes lifetimes. Healing first is necessary, okay? The star. But also wish fulfillment is upon you here. And healing is coming to you. Okay, I'm wanting to get one more pull for like a collective message for like between the two of you, yes? Last pull, please, spirit. Last final guidance for the individuals in this situation. There's still more work to be done. But it's work on the individual selves. You have the Three of Pentacles, you have the Empress, and then finally you have the Magician, but the Magician is in reverse. The Magician being in reverse is not a bad thing here. The Magician in reverse, well, the Magician is representing the ability to manifest coming together. Okay, but what I'm hearing is that's not necessarily needed right now. Because quite frankly, you don't have to force this to happen. You don't have to be in a, in a place of let me consciously make this happen. You don't. What's more important right now is doing the work, the healing work that you need to do within yourselves. The Empress and the Three of Pentacles. And you have that environment. You have what you need right now to organically let this happen. Because it really definitely feels like the Empress here, it feels like an energy of we are not trying to keep you away from each other in any way, shape or form. We actually do want you to come together, but we also want you to be as whole as you possibly can so, that's that, so that this relationship has the best opportunity possible of surviving and standing the test of time. And quite frankly, this is kind of a testament to how strong your bond is between the two of you. Because even though you may be at a distance with each other, or even though there may be some sort of separation or whatever, you still have this bond that fills you with light, that fills you with joy. Yeah, I don't want to... I'm not... No, we're not doing that. Okay. Um... All right, closing oracle guidance here. 
I mean, since this is a love reading, I'm going to go with the, um, well, I'm going to start with the love oracle cards. Yeah. Let's see what we can, closing messages here. Last shuffle. Any guidance that you have, please, spirit, for the individuals involved in this situation. Yeah, see? Yeah. All right. <laughs> At the bottom of the deck is date. And what I just heard was this is confirmation that y'all love each other. Like, this is what's help what's happening here you have date meeting someone new dating get back out there plan or set a date okay it, that, that to me i'm not trying to say that you're about to meet someone new or you're about if you i mean like whatever live your lives do your thing but to me that's just like confirmation that you absolutely want to date each other even though you may not necessarily be able to do that right now but you have Healthy choices and palm tree. Healthy choices says making healthy choices in love and in life. Self-love, self-care, and being happier. And then you have palm tree. Stability, security, permanence, growth, endurance, and flexibility. This is a testament to the strength between the two of you, or the bond of this relationship, okay? This relationship can stand the test of time. And this is actually a very needed element, a very needed aspect to it. Because if y'all can, at this point... You know you have this connection with each other, and you know that there is some distance that needs to be kept right now just so that people can heal, and yet you still allow that connection to grow and flourish between the two of you. If y'all can get through this, imagine what will happen when you actually do come together, and now you can actually be with each other, and, and you have that faith within each other. Okay. So let's, I guess, let's close this out with now the Love Oracle deck. Or I'm sorry, the Lovers Oracle deck. Yeah. So, closing Oracle guidance here in terms of this reading. Closing messages, please, Spirit, for these two here. Ooh, okay. All right, I'm going to take all of these then. So, first card you have. Let there be closeness between you, but always give each other space. Love never claims, it simply allows and gives. You have. Beware of what you are projecting. For the qualities you admire in another are the qualities you both possess. Equally so, the qualities you don't like are also your own reflection. Healing. Imagine yourself and your beloved surrounded by light. Feel your relationship being healed this very moment. And finally, Emotions are a natural and necessary part of life, but they can also distort your perception and cloud your vision. In order to, th <laughs> in order to see things clearly, you must let go of resentment. And honey, baby, boo boo, child, let me tell you, I know how hard it is to let go of resentment. Resentment was my best friend for a long time. And it was not cute. <laughs> It was not cute, honey. All right, anyway. So there you have it. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I love you all so very much. I hope you have a fantastic day. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Take care. Bye.